So today we're going to go from this flat, boring image to this cool looking neon shot with a new technique we haven't actually explored in DaVinci Resolve. Hi, how y'all going? I'm doing pretty good. This is the third time I've actually recorded this video. That's slightly annoying, but that's okay. I'm Drew from Gingo Productions, of course. I'm a freelance colorist from Melbourne. Make sure to check out my website. You can download this footage for free, of course. You can do whatever you want with it. The only thing you can't say is that you shot it, but you can chuck it on Instagram. You don't have to ask me, you can put it up. Do any grade you want on it. You don't have to do the grades I do. It's completely up to you guys, so go crazy. So if you like things about DaVinci Resolve, some tips and some tricks and some color grading, of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and it would help me out a lot. And if you give my video a like, that would also help. I never actually really asked that. Oh, I think I've had twice. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's ignore that. Let's get on to the business. So we're going to do some really interesting stuff today. More interesting than this guy staring at this stupid looking orange. We're going to use the RGB mixer and we're going to use curves. We're going to use curves in a completely different way, a way that maybe you've never seen before. If you haven't, that's great. And if you have, well, then it's going to be just as exciting somehow. Alrighty, so the first thing we're going to do, we'll go back to this one, is we're going to balance our shot just a little bit. So we'll just bring it down. And as you can see, we have some overexposure. So we can tell because these things are really like clipped off. Um, I'll make it as bright as possible. Anyway, so I'm not going to judge our color from that. We're just going to judge it from these three blobs here. So we'll just move our gain wheel around. We get something that's kind of similar. This is not a huge deal at this moment. That looks pretty good. Now let's just fix up our midtones. They just need a little bit of correction. Just looking at these three blobs again. That looks pretty good. Now in our blacks. We'll just give it a slight balance. Our blacks are generally pretty balanced compared to the mids and whites. So again, just balancing it out just a little bit. Now let's check using our little qualify here. If you don't see your numbers, right click, show pick a RGB value. And we want a kind of a low even number with our blacks. That looks pretty good. And our whites look pretty even, even enough. It's not too much of a drama. And our mids look pretty good. Now we're just going to add some saturation in. So let's add it down here, of course. Save that 56, 80 looks pretty good. We're lacking a little bit of contrast. So let's just bring our blacks down ever so slightly. You put a little bit more balance into them. That looks pretty good. We are looking a little red. So let's just balance our whites just a little bit better. Make that a little bit bigger. Alt F. Half screen. Okay, so looking at image, it's really flat, really boring, but that's completely okay because obviously you always need a starting point. And it's always good to have a nice neutral starting point, neutral enough in this point. So we're going to make some more nodes here, and what we're going to make is corrector nodes. So in your space here, all you got to do is right click, add node, add corrector, and add two more of those bad boys. If you do it properly. There you go. I mean, if I do it properly, I'm sure you did it properly. And then you want to unclick this. Now, RGB, right? Red, green, blue. Right click on them, node label. So we'll call one R for red. Right click again, D for green, and B for bad boy blue. Let's connect all these little do lackeys up. And all we're going to do is, I'll do that again. Left click and hold your mouse and then bring it onto this little triangle here. Perfect. Now you can't actually add these three nodes into this one here. As you can see, they keep dropping off. What we need is combine a node. So we'll just delete this one. So right click in your space here, go down to add node, and it's this bad boy on the bottom. So left click on it. Now, as you can see, red, green, blue. Red, green, blue. Fancy that. Now, so this little square into this little triangle here, we are red, so you try to match it up. Red is red, green is green. It's probably hard to see. And if we make this bigger, it doesn't even make it bigger. It, it pretty much goes smaller. It's so weird. Ignore that. Alrighty, so green into the middle one, which is green, and B for blue into the bottom one. 
Now we're going to leave this off. Actually, no, we're going to connect it. So this little button here to this little one here. And I'll show you what these channels actually are. So if we took this one off here, that's our red channel. So we're just in red at the moment. And we put this one here. Then we have the green, which now obviously joins together because it's weird looking yellowy green color and then blue. Now we're back to neutral, all right? So what we want to do is we want to go with our first node, which is the red. I'm going to go RGB mixer. Now in our RGB mixer, what we're going to do, we're going to change it to monochrome and keep preserve luminance on and make this zero. The easy way to do it is put your mouse over it and just go left or right and that'll take it down. 0 0.1, it doesn't particularly matter. Well, 0 0.1, sorry. And then take all the green out and take all the blue out. We already have a changing look, all right? Now we'll do the same thing for green. So monochrome, this time take all the red out, make your green zero and your blue zero. Sorry, your blue negative two. Now do the same thing with the blue. So monochrome, take all your green out, take all your red out, and then make this bad boy blue zero. Okay, so we go Alt F, half screen. We already have this weird looking image, right? It looks neutral, but it has a slight bluish tinge to it. So it looks a little bit off, but that's okay. Okay, so in our first node, which is the red node, come across and ungain these bad boys, and then come to R, which obviously is red. Now we want to put a little bit of red into the highlights, and then we want to take it out of the shadows. We've already got this nice green look to it. There's something about there looks pretty good alrighty now alt f again let's go to our green one now in our green let's select green down here now green is the one that we're really going to concentrate a lot on really get that neon light pumping through that window let's bring it right up and again right up but then let's take it out of the shadows maybe about here looks pretty good so I'll say there for now. It looks a bit pox, but we will come back and fix that. So Alt F again. Go back to our blue node. So again, let's go for B for blue. And we need to balance this out, right? So we need to put more blues in the highs. And we need to take some of those blues out. Because we want to keep that neon looking green. So something about there looks pretty good. So as you can see, we have a nice starting point. Alrighty, so we're looking pretty good. Now, I'm gonna make a couple of more adjustments here. So it may seem a bit weird at the moment why we're using the RGB mixer and the curves in this way, and why we're not simply just using the curves as we normally would. Well, they don't actually act the same way unless we use the RGB mixer. So I'm not gonna go into it as to how it changes, but I will make a follow-up video where I discuss and I'll show you how each curve actually interacts differently and how the colors change without using the RGB mixer. So for now, let's just concentrate on the grade, but there will be a follow-up video where we'll go through it and we'll go into great detail and discuss how the RGB mixer really affects your grade and how really fantastic it is and how great curves are. I mean, curves are so good, all right? They are very complex at the start, but once you get the hang of them, they will make your grading process so much better and everything will look really fantastic. But anyway, let's continue on. Let's try to, um, try to forget that little rant. <laughs> and all right, so what we're going to do, after this combiner node, we're going to make a serial node to so Alt-S. Now in this node, we're going to turn it into a layer node. So Alt-L to make that into a layer node. Now when we do this, we're going to get a really nice compact looking image. So I know that sounds a bit strange, but I think once we do it, you'll understand what I mean. It's really going to bring this image together because at the moment it's still really flat. Those colors really aren't popping the way we want them to pop. So that's completely fine. Because also we don't have any contrast in the image. We didn't put any in the start, which I know would be really strange because normally you would chuck some in. But once we are working in these nodes here, I didn't want to add contrast in. And also because I know that we're going to use a layer node we're going to add a lot of contrast in. It's better to put it in at the end this time rather than the start. All you want to do here is highlight this little box, which is the layer mixer box. Right click that bad boy, 
come down to composite mode, and then we're going to use my favorite, which is soft light. Okay. Now in this node here, we're going to take some of the saturation out because we're about to add more contrast in, and we don't really want a really high contrast saturated image. So what we're going to do, we're going to come down to saturation here and left clicking it, holding, we're going to drag it down to about 28. Looks pretty good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a lot of contrast in. So let's go to 1.27 ish or just under 1.3 maybe. So we'll say about there looks pretty good. So let's go half screen again. So Alt F. Oh, we were in half screen. <laughs> Sorry. All right, we're in half screen. So let's go full screen. Control F. Alrighty. So let's take all our nodes off. So pressing Alt D. So this is our starting image. And this is our image at the moment. And as you can see, we had this really nice neon looking light coming through that window. Get a good shot here. And that light is really, really popping out. And we have a nice background here. Well, I think we're going to change, sorry, a little bit of this background. I feel like it's maybe not separated enough, but that's okay. But the skin looks really good. I really like that glow on the skin. I feel like that really highlights his face really well. And all in all, I think it looks really good so far. So I'll show you what we did with that layer node and why it is so important. Let's go back to our layer node here. So we'll go back to full screen again. So control F. Now let's turn that node off. So control D. This is our look before we use that layer node. And as you can see, though it looks okay, it looks really flat. Our colors really aren't jumping out. We have no contrast in the image whatsoever, especially on his face, right? If you really pay attention to his face, it looks so flat. Our image. It looks terrible. But once you put that node back on, so control D, turn it back on. Now look at our image here. Everything looks so much better. That light is really showing up on his face. We have a nice contrast from the whites to the blacks. And that's because we added all that contrast. And also, because we're using a layer node, it's basically two images compiled on top of each other. So we have this nice contrast and that's why we took the saturation out also. Otherwise, we're gonna have a really, really saturated image and we don't want that. We want a bit of saturation, which is fine, but we don't want a highly saturated image. This looks so much better. So let's go out of that screen. So control F. There's a couple of things we're gonna to do to tie this image over. So we're gonna make a new node here. So Alt S. But also what we're gonna do, we're gonna come back to our layer mixer node again. It's obviously my favorite node. And let's make this screen a little bit bigger. So Alt F. Now I want to bring up some of these shadows, I think. So I'm not going to do it in the curves. I'm going to go across to our log wheels and I'm going to bring these shadows up a fair bit. We kind of want it to be, it's good contrast, but at the same time, it's a little bit too contrasty. Let's say about there. And then let's go to our primaries and let's just bring some of that light down. Maybe around about there looks pretty good. Okay, so let's go full screen. So control F. Yeah, that's looking a bit better. Maybe we've gone too much with the shadows. We'll probably come down a little bit more. But I think what we'll do instead, because to me, this part of the image is the part that's kind of irritating me. Not so much this part. So what I'm going to do, let's darken this area off a little bit. So let's go back to our normal screen. Control F. And in this node here, what we're going to do, we're going to make a gradient and we're just going to bring it across a little bit. Now, a nice little trick is to change your gradient to, com to a completely different hue. That way you know what you're hitting. Or of course, you can use Shift H and then I'll show you a selection. But I kind of like this way. Also, if you don't want to use Shift H, you can come up to View, then go to Highlight and then Highlight and that'll do the exact same thing. But we'll take that off. So there's looking pretty good. Now let's take the hue back to normal. We'll just bring that selection down just a little bit, not too much. That's all we need to do. We don't need to go too crazy. Overall, I think our image looks really good, but there's a couple of things I want to change. One is we could add a little bit more saturation in. So let's make a new node, Alt S. Add a little bit of saturation in. And let's add 
a little bit more light in. Let's bring that gain up just a little bit. Around about there looks pretty good. So let's go big screen, control F. So now we have this really cool neon look and we're pretty much done. In fact, I think we are done. The important thing to remember is we've gone from this look here, really dull, flat, boring look, desaturated, no contrast whatsoever. He's being lit from, this is more for the backlight, which is hitting this wall. We also have another window back here. The blinds are open, so that's hitting him. But all in all, like nothing really right home about. There's no actual lighting in this scene. It's all coming from the window. There's no neg or anything like that. It's simply shot on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Let's put the nodes back on, and that's the look we have. So something that's really interesting, completely different, like I said, and really happy with it. I'm really happy with the way the skin tones are being lit up. The color of the beanie, the red, everything in the image looks fantastic. And we haven't done anything that's super complicated. Some parts do seem a little bit daunting, but I think once you start fooling around with curves, the RGB mixer, especially the RGB mixer, you're going to come up with some really interesting grades. And if you do, please comment below where I can see them. So there's so many different grades that you can come up with using this technique. The last few days I've been playing around and I've come up with some very interesting ones. So we'll just go through them now. I'm not going to show you how to do them, of course, because that would be another long video, but I'll just show you what I've done. So I've got this look here, which is more desaturated. I have really deep reds. A lot less neon looking, but it is a really interesting look. He really likes that orange, by the way. And then this one here, which is a much more sepia looking tone. Um, I actually think this is probably my favorite one. So maybe we should have done that one, but maybe we'll do that another day. But this one looks great. I really like the way the reds are. And I really like the yellow. The yellow in this image looks fantastic. I'm really happy with that result. And then this one here, which is called Fake Disco for some reason, is again, completely different. You look at the image that we've gone through so far, and they're all so completely opposite to each other. This one here is very red. Again, more neon-y, I would say, but the yellow doesn't stand out as much. It's just a really red looking image. Let me go back to our one we just did now, which again, is completely different to all those grades. Don't feel like you have to do this grade. Experiment. Do whatever you want. Color grading is all about trial and error. Do whatever makes you happy, and then you'll be happy. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed making it. And if you have, make sure to subscribe. I would really appreciate it. It would really help me a lot. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. If you have any suggestions, please leave a comment below. Always happy for feedback. I've been Drew from Gingo Productions. Thanks for watching.